there guys, welcome to this masterclass from The Forge, Ben here. In this masterclass we're going to be learning how to make the character that we see on screen right now. This is someone I call the Forge Master, which kind of came to my head after I came up with the idea uh, for the name of the Forge, which was submitted by Ninja Gal a little while ago. So just to honor the occasion, here's a Forge Master of our own. In this workshop we're going to be going through everything from start to finish in real time. It's going to start off with the concepting stage, going to move through to the base modeling, going to go through accessories, detailing, uh, creating low res, UV mapping, texture baking, setting up the materials, taking it through to Unity and Marmoset to get some nice, uh, nice renders and turntables done. And yeah, we're going to go through the entire process of creating a game character. So strap in, it's going to be a long ride. It's definitely the longest set of tutorials I've ever done and hopefully it'll be the only one that I do for a while. It's been massively exhausting. But uh, everything in here you should hopefully be able to make sense of it. There are a few ups and downs. I make a lot of mistakes along the way uh, but I also show you how to fix them and there's absolutely no editing whatsoever apart from like editing out phone calls and interruptions and that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoy this guys, I say strap in and I hope you enjoy the ride. Hey guys, uh, welcome to the first chapter of the uh, Game Character Masterclass. Um, we're going to be learning how I went through the entire process of designing the Forge Master. Now, uh, the video at the start, the introduction here, uh, that's, that was filmed after I did all this when I'd completed it so at this stage I don't actually know what we're going to be turning out with so we're going to start off in ZBrush just because it's a little bit easier to uh, concept some things out in there and I'm just going to start out with loading up Lightbox and bring up the tools menu and we're going to choose Nick's uh, average mail just going to drag him out onto onto the screen into the canvas and hit edit mode or T on the keyboard. I'm going to turn off perspective and we're just going to get this ready for some quick concept sculpting. So we're going to go into the subtool menu and we're going to turn off the floor. We'll leave the eyes on because they're always handy. And from here we're going to go into layers because this has some layers already set up. So just going to press bake all to flatten them all down and then we're just going to go ahead and being as though we don't need any genitals we're going to go ahead and remove them. A little bit cruel I know but holding down shift just going to smooth them down. That'll do it. <clears throat> so I've got a bit of a sore throat guys so if I sound a little bit hoarse um, I'll have to pause for a few moments just have a drink or something. So the reason I'm starting off in ZBrush is um, mainly to save myself a little bit of time. Uh, I'm actually not going to really do much more than this. I might just uh, modify this guy a little bit just to suit me. Uh, the idea for the character that I had um, is actually based on a Turisas song uh, called Cursed Be the Iron. And it's all about uh, smelting and blacksmiths and stuff like that. Very cool viking stuff. So I wanted to make a pretty badass looking viking forge master essentially. You know, the guy who makes all the weapons for all the vikings to go forth and plunder and pillage and you know just do what vikings do best. So all I'm doing here is just altering the forms a little bit, it's kind of bulking them up. Um, obviously, being a blacksmith is going to be pretty tough. Um, standing in front of a fire all day or a furnace all day, battering away at metal is going to be a pretty chunky dude. So I'm just altering the forms to sort of suit that idea. So I'm not doing anything special, just got the move tool and I'm just going to be bulking out you know, various parts of him. So I want him to be fairly 
<clears throat> fairly chunky. So in which case, going to be giving him uh, quite a bit of a, a belly, but not one of those. Uh, I think the right word is staunch, a staunch belly. So even though he's got a bit of a belly, it's going to be quite uh, quite toned, quite thick, you know. So it's not going to be weak and fat. It's just going to be, you know, a bit of a bruiser. Not someone you'd want to get into a bar fight with. I'm not sure there are any Vikings you'd want to get into a bar fight with, but you know. So again, just uh, just bulking him out a bit. Not doing anything, you know, over the top of this stage. Main reason I'm doing this because I can then get the proportions right in Photoshop when I'm doing some concepting, and I don't have to worry about getting all the, uh, you know, all the proportions correct and having to measure everything out because I know they're more or less correct. It's just to save some time, and it's a bit of an example how you can use that brush to to help with concept art as well. So just inflating his fingers a bit, making them a bit chunkier. Smooth them down a little bit if I take it too far. Just holding down shift and you can smooth it. So I'm going to assume that you have a little knowledge of ZBrush all the way through this. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to mention every single key press that I do, but I will mention the main ones, uh, just in case you're coming into this with absolutely no knowledge. In which case, I'd recommend possibly checking out uh, some of my more basic tutorials, my quick tutorials, as well as my creature workshop where I go through everything, noting down the uh, keystrokes and things like that. So, mostly due to the length that this masterclass is going to be, I'm not going to go in and describe what every single tool does. I'm just going to assume that you have a little bit of knowledge or you're okay with just playing around and sorting a few things out for yourself then. Okay, I think that will do is, uh, you know, a bit of a form going on there. You can tell he's not, uh, he's not fit thin, he's not fat, but he's chunky-ish. Chunky enough for me anyway. So yeah, that'll do it. <clears throat> so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to send this over to um, to Photoshop, so I can just kind of use it as a rough base, and you know, sort of detail it up. So I like getting quite a bit of resolution on my concepts because it makes it easier to design the face and everything all in one. So I'm going to resize my document. I'm going to click New Document anyway, just so that'll clear out. And now I can edit this. So I'm going to go with about go with 3,000, oops, 3,500 high, and about 2,000. I might have to resize this later on. Uh, 2,000 wide. I'm going to resize that. I'm going to zoom out. Just drag him in. Hold down Shift so that he becomes level. Go into edit mode. <laughs> Seems like I missed out a little bit. <clears throat> That's okay. So we'll go to, uh, we'll just put that up to about 2,500 instead. And resize that. So, new document. Resize that to 2,500. And this one to 3,500. Resize. Zoom out a bit under the document window. And see if we can fit more of them in just so we're making more use of our space. Yeah, that'll do it. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so um, what we're going to do now is uh, create a character sheet uh, that allow us to sculpt. Uh, design a few extra details. This is a function of Zaplink. So what we need to do is go on to document, go down to Zaplink properties and we can press front. That'll automatically create a back viewport for us. 
but then go rotate them over to the side and then we can go right that will create a left for us automatically then if we click on documents and press make character sheet it will do something pretty cool for us it will create a character layout straight in Photoshop which is really handy so if we turn that off you can see we've actually got a mask in there I'm not too bothered about the mask, I'm not actually going to use it. So I'm just going to grab the paintbrush, uh, the paint bucket. Uh, I'm going to hit new layer to create a new layer over the top of that one. Then I'm going to go to edit and fill. And I'm going to fill it with 50% grey. And then turn the strip back on. So the main reason to do that is because it's fairly similar to the actual body colour. Which means that we can just fade this dude out a bit and then we can sort of scribble over the top <clears throat> and also 50% grey if you're starting out without anything in ZBrush and you're just going to do a little bit of sketching and figure out what it is you want to make um, it's really handy to have 50% grey in the background just because it gives gives you a bit of an idea that there's um, there's already something going on. It can be quite intimidating seeing an empty canvas, especially if it's bright white. Um, it creates this feeling of emptiness and just sort of uh, a little bit sort of more intimidating. So um, we've got our guy in here now. Uh, we're going to I've just created a new layer over the top of the character strip after reducing the character strip's opacity down. And now I'm just going to sort of go over the top just using a my pencil brush just scribble over the top just so we can get some sort of idea of, of a face in there so now I want this guy to be pretty uh, pretty old not uh, not ancient but um, you know he's, he's going to be a blacksmith so he's going to be uh, what round about his late 40s mid 50s something like that which is fine Vikings are always badass no matter how old or young they are so let's go ahead scribble in some eyes and so I'm not being too uh, you know, too bothered about details or anything and I'm literally just getting in a few things I need to work with yeah, so I could have done this from scratch in Photoshop but I've taken to using ZBrush as a, a quick concept kind of thing because it's just easier to chop and change forms uh, without having to, you know, sort of create new layers, go over, go over lines, erase areas, and things like that. Some people would probably say, "Hey, that's cheating. You're tracing it," but it's a concept. Who cares? Um, you know, I've done plenty of painting and things before, perfectly capable of doing it, so I'm just doing this to save myself some time and also to show you guys there are plenty of ways to get concepting done even if you're not you know, too good with the 2D side of things I mean I have done concepts entirely in ZBrush before just because its layer system um, allows for quite a few changes to be made and then you know change back without it being destructive which is really handy so I'm just gonna draw in a few basic parts here so we're gonna put in the rib cage which is basically like a t-shirt so we've got the rib cage in here and we've got the abdomen and the hips the reason I'm doing this because I'm going to be bulking them out some more and it's handy to have a bit of a framework uh, to work off you know sort of like a scaffolding in a way so you can get a good idea you know where things are attaching making sure that everything's working okay that sort of thing It's going to be a big burly dude. 
So he's got to have big burly arms. Uh, basically this concept, it's not going to be anything which, you know, you'd want to post up on the internet and say, look how awesome my concept is. It's mainly just for us to play around with some ideas. Um, mainly just for us to sort of experiment with some things like uh, different clothing and stuff like that. I tend to sculpt on the fly for the most part. Um, you know, when I've I've got a base character design that I'll you know that I'm quite happy to do, but I will improvise along the way. Uh, just apply it as a different layer or something, which I'll go through when we're back in ZBrush. Just because uh, when you're sculpting, things happen. You kind of come up with ideas and stories in your head, that sort of thing. And uh, it makes more sense just to to put those in as you're going because it's not always uh, obvious or you know, something you've really thought about beforehand. So that'll do. That's um just gonna have big boots on so feet don't really matter too much. Just gonna reduce the layer opacity on there a bit more so I can see my groundwork but not too much. And reduce the opacity of the guy in the background so I've got a pretty decent base layout. So I'm going to create a new layer of the top and then I'm going to start putting in details a little bit more. So I want to have sort of, uh, sort of squinted eyes. After all, he spends all day staring into a fire, into a forge, so... And... It's going to be pretty gnarled up just because sparks, fire. I imagine it's probably going to end up with a bit of a burn somewhere, something like that. So, give some bushy eyebrows. So you can see how loose I'm being. I'm not. I'm not putting in a ton of detail uh, or anything like that. It's just to help me get a bit of an idea of the character of this guy. And this section isn't something we're going to be spending a long time doing, so just want to get a few things in. things being messy it's really going to look a lot worse because we've got stuff underneath as well of course he's got to have a beard so let's get that in there when you're navigating around Photoshop there's a few hotkeys that I use a lot <clears throat> if um, if you're navigating around your canvas you can hold down spacebar and you can click and drag and I'll navigate you around um, you can press uh, the square brackets um, to increase and decrease your brush size. And I tend to switch between zooming by pressing Z to bring up the zoom option, and then B to bring my brush option back. turn off the underlayer now just so I can start refining things a little bit, not too much, but let's get rid of some of the underwork so I can get a bit of a better idea of what I'm going to be looking at overall.
idea of a beard in there. Normally if this was for somebody else to work on, like for instance if I was passing this concept along to somebody else, I would put in a lot more work. Um, but as you guys go, you, you're pretty much going to know what it is you're doing. Um, so it doesn't really matter too much. So I'm not putting in a massive amount of detail, I'm kind of hinting at things that I need to keep in mind while I'm modelling. Uh, for instance, the beard's quite a big part. I mean, it's got pretty pretty sharp cheekbones. So, again, that's a distinctive feature. Probably going to have quite a big uh, quite a big nose, maybe has a bit of a like a, a crook in it or something, a bit of a... Maybe it's been broken before. And sort of squinty eyes. Getting quite a low brow, just because uh, kind of fits with this sort of stern, stern idea that one I'm kind of shooting for. Big eyebrows always help that. I can see it's starting to get a character in there now. Sort of, uh, not much, but most of that we're going to add in ZBrush anyway. I'm pretty sure I've got that eye a little bit wonky, but eh, it doesn't matter. I'll be working in symmetry in ZBrush, so it really doesn't matter right now. I like the idea of him being bald. Um, not just because hair's a pain in the ass to do anyway in Zerbrush, but uh, I imagine, you know, if it, when you think of Vikings and you think of blacksmiths, bald always comes to mind. I'm not sure why. I think we've been conditioned. But uh, I quite like the idea of maybe having some tattoos or something on his head. Maybe bold, but it won't be boring to look at. So you can always put some tattoos on there as well. Maybe even a burn or something like that. Might even carve this part of his eyebrow. And we can give him a bit of a burn on his skin, something like that. So that'll be something interesting to sculpt. So now we've got a bit of character in the face, we just need to sort of fill out the body. Now, being a blacksmith, I don't imagine he's going to be wearing, you know, too much. Quite like the idea of him just being, you know, sort of uh, having an apron on, you know, the smithing aprons, big, heavy, leather, thick apron. So lots of lots of leather straps and you know chunky chunky buttons and things. Now we can fade the background a little bit more with our uh, our underlying work on as we're starting to get a few more forms in. 
So you don't need to use it quite so much. Just put in a bit of anatomy now. So obviously the pecs don't uh, go straight into the arm. There's actually a bit of an indent. So I'm just trying to hint at that. Again, not going to go massively into detail. <coughs> Do apologise about my throat today. So I think we'll give him big gauntlets, massive heavy, heavy leather gauntlets for his uh, his smithing duties. And if I drop down to the lower layer, I can actually remove a few other bits and pieces that we don't need anymore. Just to tidy it up a bit. Just cross hatch in a little bit of shading here and there just to sort of hint at a few forms. So I'm just sort of sinking his eyes in. Automatically makes him a little bit a uh, bit more on the stern side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just kind of going to do half of the apron, um, just so I can actually sort of show the legs. Um, so I'm just going to mark off so that this is actually a continuous piece. Um, again, this isn't going to be a huge piece of like you know traditional concept art that like games companies and movies like to show off as a bit of uh, promotion. Um, this is literally a resource for me to work from and because we don't need to do anything else we're not working at a studio, we're not doing any pre-production we're not running it past any uh, art directors or anything like that whereas normally you would so it's always good to have something which works out pretty cool but for this um, it's it's just our use you know it's uh, having a bit of fun being a little bit more freestyle with it so I'm just going to put in some sort of heavy leather trousers in here just because I imagine we're going to be doing a lot with leather um, just because it might be linen, who knows so I just want to get an idea of the sort of clothing that we're going to be putting on this guy big heavy boots again probably leather so we'll probably see what sort of materials we come up with anyway but uh, right now leather's good something we can figure out later on but again not been too bothered about details and things like that 
It's because we don't need them right now. Main thing is to sort of break stuff down so you kind of have an idea of, a, of what you're doing. And then you can experiment in ZBrush because I'll, I'll show you how we can go ahead and do that uh, when we get back into it. So, uh, going to give him sort of big chunky gloves. I guess uh, blacksmith gloves are a bit more like mitts more than anything, a bit like oven gloves or something. Um, from what I've seen, sort of done a little bit of research in terms of blacksmithing gear. So it's always a good idea to sort of research things first. Um, I haven't done a lot, done a little bit, but it's more of our own sort of fancy character anyway. So. We've all seen enough blacksmiths in games and films and stuff to sort of know that what they wear and the sort of thing that we'd expect from them. It's, uh, so it's fun to do your own stuff, um, just going on memory and sort of improvising from there, but it's also good to have a little bit of uh, accuracy in there as well. So research things, especially sort of drapery and the way that things behave but again at this concept stage it really doesn't matter unless you really want to go the whole hog and do more of an illustration than concept art and to be honest this isn't even concept art so that's pretty cool so I think we'll leave that there I've got a good idea of what I'm doing um, might do a might do a side view of his head perhaps but nah, I think we'll just hop straight into ZBrush with that. So let's just uh, crop that out first of all. Oops. Just clear these values out because I don't need them. So all I want to do is just crop him out. Not going to work on the other ones, but I decided I'd show you that anyway, just in case you guys want to do different versions and different uh, different angles. But I don't think it's really strictly necessary. Not for this anyway. If I was doing something for a game, like a, a full game, um, working with an indie team or a studio or something, then I'd, I would do that. I would do some different views. But this this is just a fun time and teaching you guys sort of the basics of things the basics of this process rather so yeah it's rather disproportioned from one side to another but hey it doesn't really matter we know what we're doing we're doing a bulky dude big beard old head tattoos perhaps um no idea on what the tattoos are going to look like probably some sort of celtic style things so sort of swirly things perhaps and we might even put a few things in his beard. Because Vikings. Then we'll carry the whole tattoo tattoo thing down as well. Just because it looks pretty cool. And it gives us a bit of character for the guy. So just hinting at it. So it's kind of uh, the road that I'm going to be going down. So we know that sort of when it comes to the individual features, um, the main thing is that probably going to be having uh, we're probably going to be dis dividing the mesh up into lots of different pieces. Uh, we'll do the body first, as that's going to govern everything.
But then we'll likely sort of uh, chop off the body in uh, different areas. So, so for instance, I'll just get out of that for now. So when it comes to the different parts um, that we're going to be doing, so we're going to be doing the figure. So we've got his head and his main body and everything. So all of this, all the way down here to his feet. That's going to be one part. Then when it gets to sort of detail sculpting, uh, we're probably going to divide it some more. So we're not going to need the legs and the feet because we're going to be constructing food or uh, food um, clothes around them. Can you tell I'm hungry? Um, we're going to be constructing clothes around them, so we're not going to need, you know, sort of all the parts which aren't going to be shown. So we'll have the body, and what we're likely going to do. Is divide it up into a few different areas so because we have clothing coming in here we'll likely have the upper torso as a separate part so we'll cut off the body there so the upper torso is going to be one section again just roughly showing you again an idea across here and the reason for doing that is we'll be able to support more polygons, which will give us more detail, uh, which will give us lots of nice uh, features when it comes to baking out our textures and things. Um, and then we're going to end up with everything being separate pieces. So we'd have the apron being another separate piece. We'd likely then have the trousers which are likely going to be sort of coming from here that'll probably be a separate piece and then we'll have the boots which are going to be another separate piece but of course we'll have the hands there so that's not really making much sense from me scribbling over the top but I will be going through it more uh, likely the beard will be a separate piece as well so we're going to be cutting it down into elements so we're going to have the upper body we're going to have the lower body uh, we're going to have the gloves which will replace the hands and we'll have the boots which replace the feet and the trousers which replace the lower body uh, just so we can get detail in there without having to overload one mesh but anyway let's, uh, let's turn that off I'm just going to save that out just going to stick that in So as you can see, I haven't even got a folder set up yet. We will save that as a character strip, and that'll be fine. So with that bit done, uh, let's jump back into ZBrush and start concepting this thing out. OK, so we're back in ZBrush, uh, back with our original concept mesh. So I'm going to use this for a little while. Uh, we might end up retoppering things maybe a little bit later on, we'll see. So I've got uh, got my concept art open in the background so I can refer back to it. Make sure I've actually got it there first of all. There we go. So I'm going to keep that in a separate window on the other screen. So I can refer back to it if I need to. And we're going to use this guy just as a base because it's got everything we need there. So we might as well utilize what we've got. So let's go ahead and start uh, start getting this guy looking the way that we want him to look. So first of all we're going to start off with the face. We've got symmetry activated. So. It's going to start bringing in the cheeks and such and creating the facial proportions that we need. So the concept had quite um, quite protruding cheekbones. It's going to add a crook to his nose. So 
So we're going to do as much as we can in low poly just to get the, uh, the shape right as we have fewer polygons to mess around with which means that we can get everything uh, in the right place. So to make things easier to get to, we can uh, hide parts we don't need. So you can turn on polyframe, hold down control and shift, click on the areas that we want. I'm going to invert that because we really want to get the uh, the eyelids. Hold down control shift and alt and click on the other surrounding parts that we need. Invert the selection. So that's a little bit easier to work on these on these eyelids. So I'm going for quite a squinty look. In fact, I think I'm just going to uh, hide that outside part, hide that outside part as well, and we're just going to play around just with these sections on their own. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the subtools. I'm going to delete the skull, which if that pops up, it could be a bit freaky. So just going to delete the skull, um, and I'm actually going to use the eyes outer rather than the eyes inner, simply because um, when you have like all the iris and everything all showing, uh, it can be sometimes a little bit difficult to uh, because this is actual geometry on the eyes. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to uh, to get the face looking right when you have such large irises. Uh, at least for me, anyway. So I'm going to switch to eyes outer instead, just because they're a bit more blank, which makes it a little bit uh, easier for me to work on the face. But uh, if you prefer having the other eyes on, then go right ahead. If it works for you. Let's start bringing his brow out because I want to have quite a heavy brow. It's already got quite a heavy brow anyway, but slightly heavier. So we've largely got the form the way that we wanted it anyway. Um, it's quite representative of uh, the concept art. When I say art, I mean scribble, but I'm just going to bring his pegs out a little bit more. His lats. I'm going to be going into a lot more detail on the muscles a little bit later on once we've got some more subdivision levels. Just want to get the large groups all together first of all. So I'm going to switch over to clay build. And uh, it's not going to have a massive effect on so few polys, but I'm just going to sort of put in little hints of bits and pieces. So we've got the elbows, we've got where the triceps are going to be, we've got the biceps. So just to give that idea of a staunch belly, we will be having some sort of tone muscles on the front. When I say some sort, I mean sort of abs and you know that kind of thing. I'm going to jump up a subdivision level, so I got some more stuff to play with. Let's get rid of what we don't need. This way we can start using the uh, clay build tool to sort of uh, start hinting. 
at the muscular areas. So it's not going to have sort of individually defined abs just because otherwise he's not that kind of guy. I'm going to turn the intensity down in the smooth brush a little bit. Just going to hint at the rib cage a little bit more there. Going to bring his pecs out a little bit more, just because uh, you know he wants them to be quite defined. They're not going to be like uh, you know He-Man pecs or anything like that. Just uh, they're going to be obviously there. Going to be obviously defined. It's just going to be um, sort of perhaps as if he was in shape, but not quite so much now. So they're going to have a little bit of sag to them. Okay. So just as a bit of a reference for you. Um, I do have some reference images I really like uh, referring back to when it comes to the anatomy. Uh, I've got two of them right here. One sec, I'll just bring them over onto the other screen. Uh, there's this one, and there's this one, which really handy for uh, being able to see the muscle positions, uh, the way that they intertwine with each other, and where they connect up to. And I'm going to stick to them rigidly, as um, a lot of these muscles you wouldn't see anyway because there's a fat layer over the top. So, but things like the pecs. Um, Deltoid, obviously the uh, the obliques and the abdominal muscles, uh, everything like that, trapezius and such. Uh, we're going to be using those just um, because they're the main muscles that you will see in the human body, um, especially on a guy who's you know got a bit of muscle to him. So we've started putting the deltoid in here that will uh, also carry on around the back it leads up into the neck and it's a pretty big muscle really it goes uh, all the way down to sort of the mid back where then you have the, the lats kind of uh, coming over it So obviously you have your shoulder blade up here, which it connects up to. And then you have your lats which kind of come around the side here. Into a large mass just underneath the armpits. So the lats kind of come down to sort of two thirds down the back. And then you have uh, the obliques, which kind of come down to the side here. So you don't have to know all the muscle placement. However, it does help you build up the form, general shape of the body. You can see it's starting to look uh, a lot more sort of muscle bound rather than a bit blobby. Obviously, we haven't got all the resolution we need to get the detail in yet. But it's given us a framework to work from, and that's exactly what we need. So got the trapezius and then my good old favorite the mastoid I'm not gonna bother saying its full name because Latin isn't exactly my second language. Not that I have a second language. I 
So the main reason I'm doing this, just to add a bit of form, just so I can sort of start getting some shapes in there. Um, it's not to say that they're going to stay there. More than likely we're going to start bulking them out a bit more and putting a few like fat layers on top. Um, and by that I mean really just kind of smoothing out and then hinting at the forms underneath like here. So just trying to create a hollow under here as um, there's not really much that goes on before it hits the lats and it helps keep the, the lats kind of separate which gives them their uh, their appearance. I'm not going to pretend I know a lot about anatomy because I don't. I, I've got a, a working knowledge which uh, I can call off the top of my head from when I'm doing some freestyle sculpting. Um, but then I also have a lot of uh, reference Im images that I, I fall back on for, for things that need to be a little bit more exact. So that mastoid is coming out far too much really, so I'm just going to bring that back in. Good thing about using Nick's uh, average average male is that there's a lot of the main muscle groups already in there that you can see. So you're kind of minimizing the amount of stuff that you really have to produce yourself. Again, it's uh, just kind of using what you've got available. Um, I've got myself a heavily modified version of uh, Nick's Average Mal from one of the earlier versions that he released for free before he's integrated into ZBrush. I uh, made a lot of my own changes, I made it a little bit more general, um, just to sort of, uh, you know, sort of take away the, the base appearance that the face has so you can kind of come up with a bit more of a blank slate so the face was a lot less defined. Uh, there were less muscle groups in there, all that sort of stuff. The pur purpose of this tutorial is kind of uh, working with what you've got, um, trying to teach you how to how to use what you have, um, and eventually sort of build you up so you can, you know, create your own stuff like that as well. So. It's going to bring out the back a bit more, it's going to give him a little bit more weight because at the moment he looks very much like he's uh, leaning backwards. So I'm just going to bring it out a bit more. It might even broaden his back a bit as well. So let's fill him out a bit more, kind of add a bit more of a chunkiness to his uh, side profile. Just using the move tool to do that, the move brush. So the point at this stage is to uh, do what you can with the resolution that you have. Uh, I'm going to try putting in a few more details and things just to see if it'll work. I'm not going to get a whole lot out of it, but just don't have enough polys for it right now. But if I can hint at it, then uh, there's already some groundwork for it there, so it's always handy. 
Now, not going to really see much of his face because he's, he's going to have uh, quite heavy jowl, um, quite a heavy beard. But I want to give him some quite heavy jowls and give him some thin lips. Just using the Damien standard brush to kind of carve in a few edges. Filtrum. If anyone's ever wondered what that bit just below the nose is, just above the lip, it's called the filtrum. Don't know what its purpose is, but it's there. Just going to add a little bit more character to his nose. Now, because it's going to be a video game character, um, we will be taking these down to a lower resolution once we're finished with it. Uh, when we're creating our topology, it's usually easier to um, to uh, keep everything symmetrical. So we're going to start with that first of all. So we're going to do everything symmetrical when it comes to the low re the low poly version a bit later on, uh, and then we'll add in the uh, you know the asymmetric details. So I will make his nose crooked. Um, then I will. Uh, you know, sort of uh, add in the extra little details, so scars and things like that. I'll do that as part of the sculpt, but when it comes to doing the low poly, um, we'll do that separately. If that made no sense, I do apologise. <laughs> Basically, just work in symmetry mode as much as you can at the moment. We want to give him quite a sharp jaw. So if you, if you could uh, break bricks with his feet, his face. Starting to look a little bit more aged now, which is cool. It's the kind of thing that we're going for. Do you really want to build up this jaw? So you can see that sort of the the face is taking on a bit more of a almost a skeletal look. It's because I'm really overplaying sort of the bone structure underneath. So like the orbits all around the eyes, um, the cheekbones of course, and of course the jawbone. Really overplaying that, just kind of give it a little bit more of a stylized, um, over the top kind of look. So I'm just kind of adding in some flesh. So can I have some gels? Because gels are always fun to put in. They really uh, enhance the age of a character. starting to run out of polygons for what we want to do so pretty much just going to leave it there for now I think in terms of the face 
I have a few more polys around the eye so we can play with, just to add some uh, some wrinkles and bags under the eyes. So these eyes are a little bit out of position, so I'm just going to move them back in, just to fill up the gap a little bit more. That's about it. Okay, so let's jump back down to the head. You can switch between your uh, sub tools pretty quickly just by uh, holding down Alt and then clicking on the tool that you like you like. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click on the eyes. It's made them active. Hold down Alt and click on the face and that's made that active. So start to get a little bit of character into the face there. You can kind of see where we're going with it. Let's uh, see if we can do the rest with a uh, bit more on the body. So I'm just going to start putting some using the clay build brush. Uh, it's one of my favorite brushes, most because you get a lot of texture f texture for free with it. So, for instance, with the um, with the muscles, you get a lot of the the sort of muscle flow with it, and therefore also a lot of the sort of skin flow as well, along with sort of wrinkles and things. Sorry if you can hear a lot of scratching there. It's um, I've just I'm testing a, a few different placements for my microphone. Uh, see which uh, you know, see which one, um, which location gives the best sound quality, uh, without me having to be in a stupidly uncomfortable position for it to pick me up. So it's a bit closer to my actual tablet, um, so it's picking up. I imagine, possibly, that it's picking up. Uh, the sound of my pen on the tablet, so I do apologise. Obviously if it's not, then it's not such a big deal. So I think we've largely got sort of enough there to work with. I think we could probably move on and scooch the resolution up a bit and start sorting out these details. I think I'm just going to lengthen these fingers because they're a little bit stubby. So I'm just going to grab the move tool with a fairly large brush and just lengthen them. I imagine they'd have pretty big hands anyway. A pretty big dude, so it would stand to reason. I'm just gonna inflate the handle a little bit, add a bit more meat to it. Let's turn attention to the legs and then we'll jump up a resolution. So, again, referring back to my uh, muscle diagrams, just kind of gonna put in the main muscles that we'll see. So um, there's the uh, the rectus femoris, which comes down. It's one of the biggest, uh, one of the bigger muscles there, which gets defined. That comes down to the knees. We then have uh, the sartorius, which just kind of slings back around to the back of the leg and it just kind of uh, inserts behind here so 
can't remember what uh, some of the other muscles are called. Um, uh, med medallia, something like that. It's kind of this big, big muscle, which kind of uh, sort of a teardrop shape. Then you have the uh, sartorius, no, not the sartorius. Uh, I can't remember what that is, the adductor, something like that. Adductor comes down there. Again, doesn't really matter, we're not, uh, <coughs> excuse me, not uh, defining everything too much at the moment, but it helps to have everything in. So then we have, um, let's see what else we've got. Around the back, it's basically just a lot of thinner muscles that come down the back, and a lot of them kind of wrap around the side. But again, doesn't really matter too much. It's going to be wearing trousers anyway, but it's cool to have a good base underneath, uh, just in case you may want to cut them into shorts or. You know things like that because it's not like we've gone crazy with the uh, the concepting. So we could need to do some more stuff um, later on just to kind of make it a bit more interesting or add a bit more character. Let's put the calves in. And again, not too bothered about uh, down by the feet because we're going to be putting boots on him, and I know that much for certain. There we go, everything's looking um, suitably messy. So we're definitely running out of polys, so we're going to go ahead and divide again. So control D. And you see, we've got a lot of texture for nothing here. Um, you know, his body looks quite aged already. We haven't actually done anything, you know, uh, in terms of texturing and things. Um, the lower subdivision level you start out on, the, you know, the more you get for free. So. Keep that in mind. Turn the intensity down a bit, I think. Just got the Damien standard brush now. Just gonna gonna start sort of cutting in a few uh, a few definition points. So where we've got the collarbone, where the mastoid meets up. Just gonna make sure I've got a you know, curve in there. Where we've got the deltoid and the pecs. Move it back. Remember when you carve in, it's a good idea to go over and re smooth everything. Because you're not going to completely lose what you put in, but you're going to get a bit of uh, subtlety to it that you didn't have before, which is always nice. So you can cut in pretty deep, smooth it back, and as you see, you get a few nice uh, subtle details in there. So one thing that you can do is just kind of carve in a couple of muscles, or the outlines of them, smooth them back. And now you can see that 
there's the indication that they were there, or, well, they kind of still are, but, um, good thing is that, uh, you know, it kind of looks a lot more subtle, so if we're kind of going to go for this sort of uh, staunch belly, um, you know, the muscles are still going to be there underneath, um, but not as defined. I mean, they might well be defined underneath, but it's going to be quite a, you know, sort of a thickened layer of fat and thick skin over the top as well, so they're not going to show through as they would on a bodybuilder or your typical kind of hero. So I'm just going to save up. I'm just going to save this as uh, Forge Master 02. Just because we've done a bit of progress since then, you never know, we might want to go back and fiddle with the base, but don't really need a separate file for it, but it's sometimes good to keep things separate just in case. Now you can change your brush size by pressing the square brackets on the keyboard. Got it set to a couple of keys on my Wacom tablet. So yes, I'm jumping around a fair bit. Uh, I'm not sticking in one area. Um, I try to do that as much as I can because if I get bogged down in one area, I tend to over detail. And over detailing is sort of worse, or you know, sort of as bad as, if not worse, as uh, under detailing. Uh, if you do a certain area to a really high level of detail then you'd best make the rest match it because everything else is going to seem out of place otherwise. So if you're going to spend a lot of time on an area, uh, by all means go for it, but be prepared to spend a lot more time on every other area as well as a result. So I used to be in the habit of doing that. Um, I paid for it in lost time, annoyance, and projects which never got finished. So heed that warning, if you will, to save you the time. So at this kind of level, we're still not past the points of being able to play with the major forms. Polygon levels are still quite manageable for moving things around. So have a play, um, change the proportions. He's looking a little bit older there, that's, that's good, that's kind of what I'm going for. Not quite stern enough though, I think I might bring his forehead down a little bit more. Sort of playing with the uh, the angle of his face. Actually, looking a little bit Bruce Willisy, I think, from that angle. Don't know if that's a bad thing or not. Probably not. But I'm not making Bruce Willis. I just want to shrink the eyes down a little bit more. Sorry about the background noise, my 
Dad's doing the uh, kitchen is cutting tiles. So do apologise if you can hear saw backgrounds as well. As you can probably tell, I don't get very much peace and quiet around here. So I'm just kind of, kind of hinting sort of his eyebrows. It's going to be pretty big. Having them quite low to his brow will uh, sort of accentuate sort of the sternness. Still something about his proportions that I'm not quite liking. Can't quite work out what it is. It might be the chin. The chin's a little bit too strong. Okay, so let's get a bit better idea of sort of the forms and everything. I'm actually going to give him a beard now. So let's go ahead and sort of get some things blocked in so that we can start building sort of the rest of the character to suit. Obviously, the beard's going to have quite a dramatic effect. So I'm just going to go and create a sphere 3D. Going to make poly mesh. Going to go back to my guy. I click append under the subtool panel. Oops. And click PM3D. It's going to put a sphere into the scene. We can uh, alt click on it to activate it. Go to defin uh, deformation, turn the size down. And turn on transparency so I can keep track of it. I'm going to go to Geometry and hit Dynamesh. It's going to convert the um, Polymesh sphere into a Dynamesh object, which means that we don't have to worry about its topology and it's great for sort of uh, sculpting on. So, activate Symmetry and we can start sort of forming this up and turn transparency back on. I'm just going to turn the resolution of the Dynamesh up a bit because there's not really a lot to use there. I'm going to turn off Project. I'm going to hold down uh, Control to Mask. I'm going to drag in the background and that will remesh it. Which will uh, change the resolution. So now I can start sort of bringing in the shapes that I need. So I need to build it up so it meets sort of with its hairline. or where its hairline used to be, being so it's bold. Not too fussed about the back, we will equalize it a bit. So what Dynamesh does, uh, if you haven't watched any of my other tutorials, which I strongly recommend you go and do, because I go through Dynamesh quite thoroughly, um, is it basically creates a grid which you can't see so you have a grid and another grid and another grid which is divided up into sections which is controlled by the resolution and when the details get reprojected onto the mesh it will reproject those um, uh, that grid as you can see everything's pretty much square so if we could see the grid around it, that'd be you know, 280 across, 280 up, that sort of thing. It works on a grid system. 
I'm not going into too much detail on that now, as I don't know all of the ins and outs of how it works exactly. So, just kind of um, pulling the surface down, sort of getting it to where I want it to be. As we still haven't got the resolution that we really need to do this properly. But at the moment, it's just going to be a guide so I can kind of see the character as a whole as the beard is obviously quite a big part of the character. Not quite as big as a uh, part of the character of uh, Santa Claus, but every Viking needs a beard. So if you're into your uh, your metal, uh, your metal music, then I would check out the song uh, "Cursed Be the Iron" uh, by Turisas, as that's what this uh, whole idea is kind of based on. Just increase the resolution of uh, the Dynamesh there, just so I got a bit more to play with, and everything's a little bit smoother which means I can start pushing and pulling things down a little bit closer to the surface without worrying about uh, losing any sculpting surface. You can use clay build. As I said, it is one of my favorite brushes. It's just so damn useful. So come in, see if I can sort of govern where these bits are going, because obviously I don't want hair coming out of his mouth. Um, anyone with a cat will be able to tell you how uncomfortable that can be. So again, this is more of just a, a placeholder than an actual, you know, final thing. We will be coming back to it and adding bits to it and all other kind of funky stuff. But as of right now, it's just serving its purpose as um, uh, filling in the rest of the picture. So, because we're still going back to my concept. Um, drop that in there. It's not too far off. I think if we make that larger in Photoshop, we can zoom in. Uh, we're going to go back to ZBrush, and then we can actually turn up see-through mode, and we can sort of see how this matches up. So, yeah, not far off at all. Quite happy with that. I think I need to play with the. Oops. We need to play with sort of the proportions of the head a little bit, maybe not. Oh, that kind of matches up pretty well. Might turn the nose down a little bit actually. So, I'm going to come in here. Yeah, the nose is a little bit weird. So, I'm going to bulk up the front of the nose, going to have it hook over. There we go, it's a lot better already. It's amazing the difference an angle of a nose can make. Never underestimate a nose. Um, 
There we go, make his nostrils bigger. Kind of sculpt in a few more of the nares around his uh, around the mouth, uh, cheeks and such. And make sure I definitely emphasise these cheekbones. all around the eye, just because it usually adds more of a weathered kind of look, as you can kind of see now. So I think that's kind of enough on the uh, the head there, we can see our character coming through. Um, now we've got pretty much everything we need in place, I can see the character in the face, so that's going to inform a lot of my decisions later on. Um, everything is pretty much to the right proportions. Um, I think I might increase the size of perhaps his forearms. I might actually drop down a couple of subdivision levels to do that. So you can press Shift D to drop down, or you can drag the slider down there. I've got it bound to a button on my, on my tablet, or one of the radial menus. So it's going to bulk up his forearm a bit. I'll be careful with the forearm because it does twist, so it's not straight. I'll make sure we actually bulk it out in the right places. Um, the muscle structure in the forearm is genius, to put it one way. Um, they twist around. You have flexors. Um, uh, what was the word? Um, I can't remember them all. There's three different functions. Um, you're able to lift, you're able to twist, and you're able to flex. Um, with your forearm, so it's quite a complicated setup in terms of the muscles. So you gotta try and keep that in mind when you're bulking them up. I think I'll just bring them back a little bit further. I'm just gonna accentuate the the elbow a bit, just so it sticks out. Just so I've got a bit of a landmark. So we'd have. The muscles would be coming out from here, which would then wrap around. Yeah, another one which comes down here, and you've got that sort of hollow part there. So, and we're going to be refining this a little bit later, but I don't want to stay too long at this stage doing details, so we'll, we'll just get carried away. So, we're going to get the rest of the elements in because it's going to inform us on what else we need to actually sculpt. So staying at the lowest subdivision level, we're going to get his trousers in. So to do that, um, I'm just going to hide. So I'm going to hold down um, Control Shift, and I'm just going to hide sort of up to uh, possibly just above his belly button. <laughs> that looks a little bit strange. So I just had a phone call there, so just get my brain back where it was. Just going to cut this up to. Um, just around about the belly button. Going to hold down Control Shift and switch to the Select Lasso. Hold down Control Shift and Alt and hide the bit that's left over. Now we're going to extract his trousers. So I'm just going to make sure we've got sort of a clean base of the bottom. So we're going to have trousers. I'm going to go to Subtool, I'm going to go to Extract, see what it looks like on point naught two. Looks like we've got double sided turned on. So, double sided, if we press uh, Extract, you see that we've actually got point two, point naught two thickness on the inside as well as the outside. So, we're going to turn off double, press Extract, and we've got some quite thick trousers there. So, I'm actually going to turn the thickness down to about naught point. 0.1ish extract, still pretty thick. Let's do 0.007 extract, that'll do it. Press accept. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much what the thickness is. If we hold down Alt and then click on the trousers, you see that we've got these polygroups. 
It's going to press solo mode. You can find solo mode in transform if you don't know where it is. And I'm actually going to make this solid because um, we don't need it to be hollow. So it's just it's a waste of polygons uh, when it comes to the detailing stages. So we're going to hold down Control Shift and Alt, and we're going to hold down Control Shift and invert it by dragging. And we're going to remove these poly groups by Control Shift Alt and clicking on them. So. It's going to hollow out the inside for us, in theory. I think I've started to get everything. A bit hard to tell sometimes. That wasn't right. Come on, disappear. Thank you. Right, so we got the same coloured polygroups on the inside as we do the outside, so that means they've all been done. So we can then go into Geometry, uh, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. So now that geometry has now been deleted, and we can go Close Holes. And that's going to make it a solid mesh for us. So that just means that we don't have you know, if we want to go up to a million polygons, then we'd really need to have to go up to two million polygons because we're only going to be sculpting on the outside of the mesh anyway. If we had a million polygons, we'd only have 500,000 on the outside and then we'd have 500,000 on the inside. So, it helps save a few polys here and there, uh, optimize what we've got. Don't have to worry about the fact that they're triangles, it's not like we're going to be sculpting on that either. So, Go back to our main model and unhide it by control shift and clicking on the background. Turn on his trousers. Let's turn off polyframe so I can see what I'm doing. And right, what we're gonna do now is just going to delete his legs because we don't need them. So I'm gonna duplicate subtool. I'm going to hide the original. And I'm going to press uh, transparency. Something's not working. No. That's strange. There we go. Turn off solo mode. So now we can hide the bits we don't need of the body. So I'm going to leave a little bit overhanging. So let's turn on polyframe. I'm going to select. I'm going to do Control Shift and I'm going to hide this section of his legs. And I'm going to hide up to the point here as well. So it's still got a bit sticking in. I'm going to go to Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. So now we've got the upper torso, I'm actually going to rename that. Upper torso. We've got the original, so I'm going to hit rename and press and type in original. Just so we can keep them organized. We've then got trousers. Or pants, depending on where you're from. Here in Britain, we call them trousers. So, let's have a look what we've got. So we've got trousers there, we've got some feet, which are actually part of the upper torso. We'll probably be getting rid of them soon as well, because we're going to be adding some boots. So, I think I might do that now, actually. I might separate them. So, if we just hide them, Invert the selection by uh, control, shift, and dragging on the background. Go to split under subtools and then press split hidden. We'll now get feet on a separate uh, separate subtool. I'm going to rename that feet because we'll probably just convert them into boots. Um, I'll dynamesh them, get rid of the toes, and then we can convert them into boots that way. 
So next, the only other thing really is um, is his apron. So we'll get onto that very shortly. In fact, I'll save that for the next chapter because it's going to be a pretty tough thing to do all in itself. So let's have a look what we've got. If we go to our upper torso, we can uh, we'll put the subdivision levels up. We'll go to the trousers. We'll give them some subdivision levels. And same with the feet. Go up to the subdivs. And we've got the beard. So let's have a look. See what we've got so far. Let's turn the see-through up. I'm just going to go over through to Photoshop and just zoom out. So obviously got a lot of work to do, but you can see we've got the basis of what we're doing. Is uh, is chunky enough? Everything kind of fits with our sculpt, our concept so far. Maybe his arms need bulking up a little bit more, but that's going to be the fun process that we go into next. We've got the apron to put in, and that's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to do. So I'm going to do that in its own entire chapter. So that's the end of the concepting phase, guys. Um, we've got our base, we know where it's heading. And um, join me in chapter two, where we'll go over putting in the other elements. Uh, we'll be doing the beard, we'll be doing the apron. Uh, we'll be doing the boots and we'll be constructing everything and playing with a few cool things along the way. So let's just turn that back down. It's going to save this up. And that'll do it for chapter one. So check back soon, guys. And uh, I hope you've had fun so far. And yeah, I'm quite liking this dude so far. He's. Um, kind of going where I wanted him to go, so brilliant. Take care guys, I'll see you soon.